I just logged into the server and now there's a chest in front of my house. Uh, what does it say here? We tried to deliver your package on February 30th, 2024. Please pay five diamonds to re-deliver your package. For support, please email demi at divergentsap.com. Now, I don't know about you guys, but uh, I don't remember February having 30 days. We had leap year this year, it just passed. It goes to 29, but never 30. You know, I, I think this might be a little a little phishing scam. Yeah, I think they're trying to phishing me out for some money, I guess, and... Uh, uh, well, if they're not phishing me out of my money, they definitely put a fish into my house. Had issues with your door, but got in. Right-click note block. Okay, what, okay right-click note block? What, what does this even do? Ugh. Oh, God. Well, I'm just gonna take this then. Anyways, we're back. I've made a little bit of progress on the base. As you can see, I've terraformed a bit of this area. It's now a little bit more round here, and if you may have noticed, uh, the forest that used to be here is now re replaced with four bamboo stalks. And that is because I removed it just to have a little bit more space and also just to get a little bit of bamboo going in here since I needed scaffolding. Over here, I did a little bit of farming off camera. Yeah, look at this huge wheat field. This took like four hours of work. Like, one, having the area prepped up. Two, having to place down the water. Thank you, Avery, for helping me put all the water down. And also, hoeing this thing probably took forever. Like, as you can see, like, some parts of the water doesn't really hydrate all of the hoe land, especially going down or up, because you can't really use verticality like this to hydrate your crops. So what I did instead was, as you can see, I've made little channels of, uh, I call this irrigation wells. You basically dig out and you basically have water flow through because it doesn't matter what type of water, it can be flowing water, it can even be like a little smidge of water and it can hydrate the same level as one full block. So as we can see now, I've made it relatively spaced out well, and anything like outside of like the 8x8 grid is just extra water that doesn't fully hydrate all the crops. But I've made it so that these are made of cobblestone walls and lanterns to light up the area, but I've also made these leaf blocks here so it would just make it look more natural instead of having slabs like uh, these parts here. And speaking on slabs, the reason why I've made it so is because this way you can kind of step up to each level without risking your crops being broken. So I've really considered this uh, wheat design. I'm not really the kind of guy that kind of makes everything like super, super efficient. So that's why I just opted to make a really normal wheat field. That way I can just harvest it all and just not worry about the redstone. You know, I like manual work, so this is my kind of thing. Over here we have an empty field. I will do this for the rest of the crops, so I'm planning to have beetroot be at the bottom here and then split this in half for carrots and potatoes. I'm not really that big on the other crops, I really just like wheat, but hey, we're gonna need these extra crops for something special later on. And then we have this sand tower. This is going to be a windmill that I'm going to put here, but for now I haven't planned it out. I'm recording this just right after I finish this part. So once I start designing this, we can get started on making the windmill. Although there is something that I am a little bit uh, confused about. So remember my old house guys when I said I was going to give it to my friend? Well, the thing about it is their base is right here. So they're based next to me. What did they do with my house? You know, I haven't really gone over there in quite a while. It's been a very long time since I went to the midland of Karta. So we might as well just go ahead and check. Why is there camp? Why is there smoke over there? My house okay? Oh my god, my house! When I said I didn't want this house anymore, I didn't really mean it by this. Gosh, how did this even happen? Okay, at least all the fire is gone. Look what happened to my house! It's ruined! And why is that thing there? It's a little concerning, but... These... Wait, what's this? Embers? I guess this was what was left of the... Fire. You know, what's making me confused is... This server doesn't have 
fire tick on. We don't really have any burning buildings before. Something tells me these embers might have to do something about it. Well, I'll look into it later. We have a little bit more plans. We already have a new house, so I'm not really that sad. Plus, I didn't like this house to begin with, so maybe this is a blessing in disguise. For now, though, we still have a house. We made one last episode, and we're going to use this to expand even further. We did have a wheat field to start off with, and it's not. I'm not done here. I still have a lot more to go. And what we're going to be starting off with is the windmill, like I said from earlier. Now, we do have this storage system here, and I did have a lot of trouble coming up with like the different names for all these chests. But, I feel like we're having a little bit too much here. Stuff like food, it has all my crops and everything. So what we're doing is we're going to make a windmill with, kind of, it's a kind of like a house windmill combination. Where it's going to be storing, one, all of the wheat we're going to collect over time, but also the other crops like carrots, potatoes, and beetroot. So the windmill house is gonna go over here, and the reason why I'm trying to space out my storage systems is because having everything in one place kinda lags the entire area. So I'm trying to space it out, trying to make it less laggy overall. So that's the plan for today's episode. We're gonna make a nice windmill house for our crops. I will plant this later. I will plant this uh, in between me planning the builds, but for now, we're just gonna go ahead and cut to whenever I start working on the house. All right, now I've gotten all the resources we need for the windmill house. As we can see, we have a bunch of wood. We also got a few different things I haven't really built with before, like concrete powder and such. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna make the windmill house, and this time around, I actually have replay mod available. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna do a time lapse, but I'm gonna be explaining the process while we build. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and start with the windmill. The base I used was cobblestone and we're making a spherical shape with both the blocks and the walls. So we're going to have three blocks on each side and then for the corners we're going to put the walls to make a little bit more spherical shape with it and then we're going to finish it off with staircase. You may also know that there's a little thing jutting out from the side of it and that's because that's how we're going to connect the windmill to our house. So next up now we're going to be working on the shaft of the windmill. I've used spruce plank as consistent with my build palette, and you might have noticed I've been using easy place because it's, I'm kind of lazy and it's very convenient, so it kind of looks like I'm magically placing down the blocks, but we're going up roughly like, I don't know, like 13 blocks, and you may notice that there's a hole there, but don't worry, that's where we're going to add the windmill fans later on. And now it's finally time to work on the blades, as you can see easy build is really coming into handy. So for the arms, we're going to be using stripped spruce logs and dark oak fences, kind of as the frame of the blades. And as you can see here, we are now using both white wool and white concrete to make the blades. Now that the windmill's finished, we're going to now work on the actual house part of the windmill house. So of course, we're going to start with the frame, four simple pillars connected with beams with spruce logs. And you might notice that the behind side is a lot more longer than the front. And there's a good reason to why, but I'm going to explain to that later. Alright, so now to put on the walls, it's pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not going to be speaking much, but of course I had the final pillar over there because I kind of forgot to. So here's the reason why I made the spruce logs all the way back there, is because we're using two different roof designs. The front roof is going to be the more upward curve that I like to make, and the other side is going to be the longer, more linear shape to make that more unique roof shape. That way I have a little bit more room for the interior, while also making the roofs in the front look nice and having the back look kind of more bigger than it would look if I made it the same size as the windmill. Of course, I added a little bit of the front roof there just to make it pop out a bit and make it a little bit more inviting when we walk in. But the final step of the exterior is just as simple as just putting in the windows. So of course, every interior now needs some lighting. So what I did was I take a ladder connected to a slab second floor and we added lantern stringing from the ceiling for some lighting. Now for the inside of the windmill, of course we're going to add light, but we're actually going to make this more roleplay than functional. The windmills are actually made to grind wheat, so the blades kind of turn and that kind of makes the crank turn as well, and that is what makes wheat into flour. So here we're just doing exactly that. Now we're going to actually connect the crank part to the actual windmill, so how we're going to do it, we're just going to stack all the way up with spruce fence. And we're going to kind of cover it up with spruce trapdoor just to make it a little bit nicer on the inside. But now it, there's an actual thing connecting the blades of the windmill to the actual mill itself. 
And finally, we're going to be putting the storage system for our crops in the windmill house. And when I say storage system, I just mean a wall of chests like I usually like to do. And just like that, we're done with our windmill house. And there we have. Oh, hi, hi there. <laughs> So we have here the windmill house, but we actually are going to add the final piece to the house, which is to add the flooring. I forgot to do this in the time lapse, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to add in the stone bricks. All right, this will be the final three, and there we go. So that is basically the entirety of this house. It's not that big. It's just pretty small. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and see just how much of our rewards we're going to reap from the fields. You haven't been ruining crops, have you? <laughs> okay, good. All right, so you might ask me, how are we going to be replanting and destroying all these crops for this entire field? It's going to be painful if I just hold left click, just go all crazy and then slowly put one by one each seed. Well, I have a seed right here and I have this really nice mod where I just right click and it just replants it. It's that simple. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, get every single crop here, and we're gonna see just how much we can really reap out of this. Let's go. There we go, we farmed everything. Surprisingly, after I tried to finally get all the crops, Look, it's already growing back. It's so quick. Yeah, we're definitely getting a lot of wheat for sure. Let's go ahead. Let's take a look at what we have. Almost a shulker of potatoes. We have, I think, a shulker and a bit of carrots. We have ourselves 40 wheat, sorry, 40 beetroot, but we have, look at this, three whole shulker boxes and, just, and a half of just wheat. That is a lot of wheat that we're getting. But... Of course, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna move this over to our new windmill house. I really like that windmill design. It is so beautiful. I like how curved it is. So I'm gonna make the path right now just real quick. Just go ahead, just like so. Just to the path of the house. There we go. Now we can start putting this stuff in. We go ahead, slowly move it over. We're gonna put the potatoes. Here we are. I'm gonna put them two chests over so right here we're gonna go ahead we're gonna take our beetroot we're gonna put it over here at the final chest i believe yep right here and then with all the wheat that we have we're gonna bring this we're gonna go up and we're gonna condense this down to hay bales because we can do that and i don't want that much wheat to take up my inventory space we're gonna go ahead just do like so one two three four five six seven and a half stacks of hay bales, which is a whole lot of wheat. All right, that's all for this episode. I really enjoyed making this windmill house, and with all the crops that we have in f behind us, I think we did pretty well for this episode. Thank you for watching this episode. And remember, always have a good day, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.